Hello everyone, my name is Kimona Sotirchos and I'm one of the Kubeflow's Notebooks Working Group leads. And today I'm going to show you one exciting new feature we have for 1.3. And it's the ability to be able to start and stop your notebook servers. This is one feature requested by many users and we're really happy to bring you the first iteration. So in this video, I'd like to show you what we can do with it for Kubeflow 1.3 and share with you our thoughts on what are good next steps and how I would like to extend this feature. So the UX around here is going to be really simple. You're going to have a, a stop and start button right next to its notebook, which is going to allow you to stop a running notebook server. And th this might not be entirely clear, but by when we say stop, we don't mean that I'm going to get a little bit technical right now. And What's actually happening under the hood is the deployment Kubernetes object, we just change its replicas number down to zero. So there are no pods actually running for this notebook server, but the custom resource for the notebook itself is still there. The ETCD server of Kubernetes still have, has our, notebooks, our notebook stored. This, mean, this means that if I'd like to start my notebook again, I won't have to create an entire new notebook with the same settings. It's gonna remember that, oh, hey, I'm using this much RAM, these many, these volumes mounted in these places. So I'm going, I can just click on start and it will start a pod with the same configuration as it was running previously. And getting even a little bit more technical, I'm also going to get to the ter terminal land. Um, also, I'm going to use the namespace Kubeflow user. Let me show you what's happening exactly under the hood right now and how this is achieved. And what's going on is, as I told you, our notebooks CR is still there, but if I get my pods, I don't see any pod that corresponds to this notebook. But I do still see a stateful set for the notebook. But as you can see, it doesn't have any pod running for this corresponding notebook server. So what's going on here is that, let me get notebook. What we do to start and stop the notebook is that we just add an annotation to the CR itself, which the, control, the, the controller that reconciles the CRs picks it up and understands that, hey, the user wants to stop this notebook server. So what it's going to do is going to see that the underlying deployment, oh yeah, less. And as you can see, it's gonna make the replica zero as long as we have it like this. So the good thing with this approach is that we can allow users to scale their resources down to zero whenever they want, which can help reduce the cost of running these notebooks, especially if a notebook is running some GPUs. And of course, you can start it up again by clicking on the start button and it's starting, it's scheduling the pod. And if we can take a look at the notebook again, we will see that it doesn't have this annotation anymore. So if you'd like to do it programmatically as well, the only thing you need to do is just add the annotation we just shown to the notebook CR itself. So this is what we have available in 1.3. While it's a good first step well, where we allow users to start and stop their notebooks. The next thing and goal we have is what comes to every people's mind and it is, okay, I can do it manually. Now, is there any mechanism for so I can do it automatically? Because some developers might forget to, to close their notebooks at the end of the day. And this might become especially a problem if, as we mentioned, we have notebooks that utilize GPUs, which are really, which cost a lot, and we don't want to have them running for if they're not uh, used anymore. So what we're thinking about, about this approach is it's two things mainly. The first thing is how do we figure out that a notebook is idle and making it a little bit more complicated is right now we also support VS, uh, VS, VS Code and RStudio. So the question can become, okay, how can we, what does it mean that a notebook is idle for all of these three cases? 
And for Jupyter, the answer is kind, kind of simple because the Jupyter API gives us an API st status endpoint, which will, will give us an option with is an information that, hey, this is the last timestamp that the notebook was active. And for the note, Jupyter notebook specific case by active, it does, it, it doesn't only mean that, hey, the last time I got a request was five minutes ago. It's actually a bit, little bit more complicated because a Jupyter notebook might run some computations in the background. Even if I'm not connected, my notebook might be training a model. So the Jupyter API has, has taken this under consideration. And thankfully, the endpoint that I just showed you so gives us information about the underlying kernels and how much are they being utilized. So we can use this endpoint with Jupyter to figure out, hey, the notebook is running, it's doing some training, or it's idle. But for our studio and VS Code, we'll need to think of a mechanism of understanding if a notebook is idle. An interesting uh, distinction we can do here is to say, OK, our we will treat our studio and VS Code as editors, where we don't expect users to run intensive processes. So in this case, just taking the, the aspect of seeing how many requests uh, are going through the, these apps. And for example, if, I, if this app didn't get a request in the last day, we can consider it idle and call it and stop it. And then this makes sense. So a first approach could be to use the Jupyter specific API for Jupyter notebooks, and then use a more general approach to to end requests for the other web servers, which can be achieved by Istio, by the way. And the next thing, the last thing that we need to consider for such a mechanism is that we don't want to have the same setting applied to all notebooks. And this means that I don't want to, to, to inform the controller to stop all of the notebooks after one day, for example, because as we mentioned, some notebooks might have bigger prior might be more costly than other notebooks. So if I have a notebook that is using GPU, I'd like to stop it immediately after one hour tops if it's idle. While for notebooks that are using CPU, I might be a little more be more elastic there and say, okay, after 12 hours, just close them to make sure. And the mech, this is one of the biggest priorities we want to have for 1.3 and start discussing. And these are currently our thoughts around this matter. And also note that one distinction to also keep in mind is what I'm talking right now is I'm only describing a mechanism in which you, the platform itself will understand and scale down to zero the actual pod themselves. But if we have this mechanism in place, we can also, it's really easy to add another setting and say, okay, if this notebook is not used after 10 days, for example, just delete the entire notebooks. This is called culling. And in the, the difference here is that we remove the entire notebook CR so we can keep also our, our cluster clean of unused resources. But the first step, as mentioned again, is we want to be able to add an automatic mechanism, mechanism to stop notebooks that are idle. And then if we have this solid first iteration, we can extend it to actually also deleting entire notebooks and not just scaling the resources down to zero. So this is the this is the feature, and these are our thoughts. We're really we would really like to hear your thoughts as well, and how it, it would make sense for your case to have started this mechanism, and what would you like to define for it. So feel free to join us in our 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 meetings and give us your feedback.